Hey guys, it's Steve Schmidt again with Simple Pump Company. Uh, today what I want to talk about is what could possibly be causing an issue where you, don't, you aren't getting water anymore. So you've had the pump for a while, uh, you know, maybe several years, uh, and all of a sudden it, it's, it stops working. Uh, typically there's, there's really three things that will cause that. Uh, one of them is, is based on if you haven't used it for a while. You know, we, we always suggest that you use this pump once or twice a month, put a couple gallons through it, keeps the seals soft, it's a mechanical piece of equipment, it, it makes sure the moving parts are nice and lubricated and, and don't have a chance to seize up. Um, but, but one of the first causes that, that will make it so you can't get water, uh, the contributing factor is if you don't use it. Uh, you know, most water uh, isn't perfectly clean, meaning it, it's not without uh, mineral solids. So mineral solids would be iron, it would be calcium, uh, you know, other things that just exist within the earth that that water is filtering through uh, that, that become part of the water composition. Um, all of those things, if not used, uh, can create a, a blockage in the pump. And let me explain that a bit more. So the, the minerals are heavier than the water. And say you go in and you use your pump, you get water out. Well, now there's a column of water in the pipe. Uh, and that sits for a period of time. Uh, those solids float or sink, sorry, sink to the bottom. Uh, and then they collect uh, typically in the, in the bottom seat. So this is a newer style for us. We use a foot valve. Uh, but even in a foot valve, this applies. So your water is coming down the pipe and it's settling down here in this bottom check valve uh, because that's where it stops, right? Because it's, it's, it's plugged there. This is why it holds prime. Uh, and what happens is those mineral solids actually will, will start to fuse to the, the actual metals uh, on the pump. And then they, they fuse together and it essentially plugs the ability uh, for that valve to open when you when you're pumping see when, when you're pumping the the pump is lifting up the piston is lifting up uh, and while it's pushing water upward it's also creating a vacuum underneath and that vacuum releases that valve or in the older style that we have it releases the ball and then water fills in behind it uh, but if there's enough solids that have sat for long enough uh, it keeps that ball from moving or it, it doesn't allow that valve to open. It would require more vacuum than what the, the pump can create uh, to break it loose. Um, so if, if you're not getting water and you haven't used the pump in months or in maybe a couple of years, um, the best way to test that, uh, and, and this test applies to other failure modes as well, is to take a very thin plastic bag, maybe something like you would put your produce in at the, at the grocery store, right, very thin. Uh, tape it to the outlet of the pump, make sure it's sealed around, uh, and start pumping the, 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 the pump. Uh, if that bag will inflate on the downstroke of the handle and then deflate completely on the upstroke of the handle, uh, well then there's a good chance that it's stuck because the water, the column of water inside of there is just being lifted up 10 inches and then brought back down 10 inches. Uh, so it's going to displace 10 inches of air. So it's going to push that into the bag and then it's going to suck it right back down. Um, so that, that's really the most common reason why uh, we see that the pumps stop working. Uh, so if, if, if that, those symptoms are uh, something that you're going to see or you're seeing and, and the test confirms that, uh, in most cases, unfortunately, the pump needs to be pulled out uh, and it needs to be unstuck. Uh, with the valve, you can do that by getting in there and cleaning it and, and actually, you know, releasing that valve and then usually soaking it in vinegar uh, will allow it to get cleaned up because you'll want to make sure all of that, uh, all those solids are gone. Uh, with the older style, with the ball, usually you can just push that ball with your finger and unstick it and then clean everything up with vinegar to get, to get it clean up to where it would work again. And then you can put everything back together and put it down into the well. Uh, I have had situations where if it's not too bad, uh, eventually after you pump for a while, it will, the vacuum will, will, will create enough uh, draw to, to open it up or to, or to get the ball loose. Um, so uh, if, if that doesn't work, obviously give us a call and we can help you through it. 
uh, or even if you, you've determined that's what it is, give us a call and we've got some other tricks you can try. Um, but that, that's, that's the main reason why a pump stops working after a period of time. Um, the, the, the next potential reason is that your water level is dropped. You know, water levels in wells drop all the time. They can drop seasonally. Uh, and if there are people building in your area and there's more people that are putting wells into a specific water table, that's going to reduce the pressure in that table because it's, it's feeding more wells, which is going to bring the static water level down. Uh, and obviously, if the pump's not in the water, then it's not going to it's not going to bring up water. Uh, so the way to test for that is to use the bag uh, in the same way that you would the first test. Uh, but the result's going to be a little bit different because uh, what's going to happen is that pump is going to start actually producing air. It's going to be compressing and pushing air. So when you pump, that bag is going to start to fill up and it's going to keep filling up. So on the downstroke of the handle, it'll it'll put air in the upstroke it won't take air out. Uh, it might take a little bit, uh, but if you were to pump continuously for a while, if that bag continues to fill up and eventually fill all the way up, uh, well then you know that, that you're not in the water uh, because you're just moving all of this air. Because the pump will actually suck the air up and then push it up through the pipe. Uh, so if, if that's the situation and you get that result with the bag test, uh, then more than likely you need to lower the pump. Uh, and in most cases, that's as easy as ordering more drop pipe kits uh, and then removing the top drop pipe with the weep hole, adding the additional drop pipe kits, putting the weep hole pipe back on, and then the pump head assembly, and, and you should be producing water again. Uh, I have seen situations where, you know, water level starts out allowing for, say, the 125 cylinder like this, which is our middle pumping cylinder, uh, but then over a longer period of time drops to the point where it's beyond the limits of this pump cylinder, uh, and you may need to go to the lower, the, the smaller cylinder. Uh, that, that's a unique situation, but um, again, something that you can call and discuss with us if you determine that that's, that's what's causing the problem. Um, the, the third thing that we see that will, will, will cause the, pop to, uh, the, the pump to stop producing water is if the seals are worn out. So that's a normal thing, right? Seals wear, you've got rubber rubbing on steel, uh, so over time, those are going to experience wear. Uh, and what you'll notice over time is that the volume per stroke that you're getting starts to diminish. And what that means is that those seals aren't as tight, so water gets past them when, they're push when it's pushing the water up. Uh, and they will wear to the point where the head pressure above is enough that the water just blows by the piston uh, and you won't get water. Uh, so what we recommend is you know, keep an eye on the volume. If it starts to diminish, uh, start to plan to, to, to pull the pump and maintenance it and, and put new seals on it. Um, the, the, last, the last thing that we typically experience, uh, and it's, it's the rarest, is if for some reason one of your rod connections were to uh, unthread, uh, or if the, the bond between the stainless steel end and, and the, the fiberglass were to uh, break. Uh, if that happens, what you're going to notice is there's very little to no resistance on the handle. Uh, you know, so if your water level is 100 feet and you used to have to put a decent amount of pressure on the handle to get water to be produced, and all of a sudden it stops working and that handle uh, is almost weightless, uh, then most likely that connection has that disconnect has happened. And again, if it's that the the, the ends came unthreaded. You would uninstall the pump to the point of the uh, disconnect, uh, and then you would reinstall it and reconnect. And, and we would, of course, at that point, suggest uh, using some Loctite on each connection just to make sure that, um, that it doesn't happen again. Uh, and we do provide in our instructions two different uh, types of Loctites that are approved for NSF or, or drinking water safety. Uh, so we absolutely suggest that that's the style that you use or the type that you use. Um, now, if you, if you are pulling it apart and you get to a point and you see, okay, one of the rods failed, uh, then what you do is you call us. We cover that under warranty. We pay for the part and the shipping, um, and then you replace that part and put your pump back together, and, and you're, you're back in business. Um, so, I mean, th there have been other unique things that we've seen. We, you know, all kind of, we've seen pumps get struck by lightning and melt the pipe and the rod, and then it's, everything's gone below it, but that's... That's a, a real exception. 
but the tests that I just explained across those uh, those different error, you know, issues that you can see are going to cover 99% of of where you uh, you see a failure in your in your system or you stop getting water. Uh, and again, if none of those make sense, or if you want a little bit more context or a little help when when trying to diagnose, uh, you can always call us here, and we're more than happy to to help you out. Uh, so thank you for your time, uh, and again, don't forget to subscribe. We'll talk to you again soon.